one of the people that you wrestled with as a good guy, because you were a good guy in 74 and 77, weren't you? Mm -hmm. uh, in 74, you had a bit of a run with Pac Song. Uh, memories of Pac Song and also Gary Hart, who managed him. Yeah, yes, um, he's a nice guy, you know, gentle, gentle, gentle giant. Uh, well, he did, he had a great success in the South. I, I see him, you know, I guess he had the, you know, that, that uh, you know, that monstrous looking face and he was lean bodied and he could just keep going and going. He was no, he would take concrete blocks, you know, the, the, just, you know, busted up concrete or, or, or even the, the bricks, the guy that they, they, that, the, you know, that the judo guys break, you know, usually they lay it on, you know, they'll stack it and they'll, you know, put a little balance in between. So there's, you know, so there's gifts when you hit the, hit the, you know, hit the, uh, hit the block, it, you know, it continues through and stuff. Not packy boy. He'd lay that thing on the cement and he would just chop that thing and chop that thing, chop till he pulverized. So it just turned back to, to, to cement. To, to you know, to, con to be from concrete to cement, <laughs> he had some, you know, and, and he he throw that kick at you, and it just, uh, you know, he ever hit you with that kick? I'm sure, hmm. a couple times I went, I went a little hoarse, <laughs> just getting close to it. Did he have like one hand much bigger than the other, like the karate chopping brick chopping hand? Probably, yeah, <laughs> that that right hand. I mean, it's unbelievable. You know, he just laid on the. When we were doing uh, in in the in the back there where we did the interviews against the ring in uh, Fort Hess in uh, all in North 106 North Albany in the uh, Sportatorium there, and he just laid the brick on the cement, you know, and, and one you know he chopped the brick and you know adobe brick, then he chopped the the concrete, he just chopped it up. I mean, I mean, you know, so it was amazing. <laughs> awesome. Uh, what about Gary Hart then? Because I mean, obviously he had. Um visions of being a booker and being on the creative end for quite a while because he went to do that in uh, Texas, I believe. Um, did he have any any idea that he'd want to do that in Florida or was he ever pitching ideas or was he just simply a manager slash wrestler? Sure, he was a, an excellent, great manager. He held, you know, good manager, take care of his heels, would stand right there with his heels, you know, and, uh, and, and then he could take care of the baby faces too because I was a baby when he was there. He was a... Uh, uh, you know, well, he, you know, he was, he, he wanted to go back to Dallas is what he wanted. He wanted that book in Dallas, but you know, that with the Von Erichs and as many, uh, as, as many, you know, birds that were feed to feed the nest, and, you know, that was just an impossible job. And I, I think he got some kind type of blood disease, but he was, he was real close with Barnett and all the, all the promoters and everybody, you know, it was, a, he was an interesting guy, intelligent man. Uh, when, um, when someone said, uh, or when someone asked him, uh, so what's your uh, wrestling uh, nickname? And he said, Playboy. Were you like, oh, yeah? yeah well, you know, it was a bit professional wrestling, everybody. It's kind of one of the, uh, what I was thinking when, when Orndorff passed last couple weeks ago when we, on the, in the middle of the thing, uh, how Vince McMahon had, had organized, it'd be to another time, had organized his territory to come, come full circle like 40 years from now where Orndorff and I were pretty much the same person that started, you know, on Vince's, uh, Vince's road that he'd used to, and then, you know, down the road came the character, the, the marketable characters, the ones who are able to make toys out of, may, able to make lunch boxes and stuff out of, you know, everybody had a, a bee, a killer bee or a, a parrot or a, you know, uh, Hercules had chains, you know, everybody became a marketing tool after a while. I wondered if I'm sure that probably wasn't in the grand scheme, but I think I, I eventually how it, you know, it grew to be. Mm. Think how great the killer bees would have been if they actually had a nest of bees that they brought down to the ring. That would just be, that's, yeah. that's gold. That is absolutely gold. <laughs> uh, I'll, um, I'll ask one more Gary Hart thing. Um, salty individual streetwise. Um, the legend of the uh, razor blade in his pocket or on the tip of his finger. Did you ever see it? And did you ever learn the art of, um, you know, zipping someone who got too close to you with a blade? Uh, no, he had him. I never saw it. He never, was it never, we were, you know, it was, he was well, I was, uh, I wasn't involved. In the, well, I was involved in 74. I was got, got a good, good position there, but uh, no, no, never. 
saw the songs again. It was, that was from that was from old Mark Lewin in the Sheik days. <laughs> This is the best thing. The sheik was out there performing lobotomies, <laughs> you know, dissections on the crowd. 